Welcome back to Boys and Ghouls Film Review, folks. I'm your host, Sarah Stevenson. This is my co-host, Mike Stevenson. Hi, guys. And tonight we're reviewing um, the 2001 13th Ghost. No, 13 Ghost. 13 Ghost. Ghost. But, other than, but yeah. well, you guys, as you guys are well aware, there was a one that they made years before called... That was made in 1960. That and this was just a remake from William Castle's original film project. He did, although I think this one's an improvement because in this 2001 one is an improvement over the other one because that one was a bit too confusing and kept um, making several mistakes. No, they didn't. Well, they did. Remember how um, they kept saying, um, "How else would you explain um, the fact that?" The the man who they said the mentioned man. thirteen ghosts, but it hadn't been thirteen ghosts because they're going to make a new ghost. Yes, I know that wasn't keep making mistakes. That was just a faux pas. Okay, a faux pas, faux that, pas. That, and that, how they like said during the Ouija board thing in the that this nineteen sixty one, in that one they said there were thirteen ghosts when there were, the thirteen actually, ghosts wasn't made yet. The, the, the last ghost hadn't been made. Uh, hint, hint. Mister Castle. Who or, or well, the guy who wrote it, naughty. Um, it should yeah. have been twelve ghosts at the time. Yeah, uh, Rob White who wrote the uh, screenplay and the story, or whatever. So they they made a little bit of a yeah. It doesn't matter. I yeah. know. Okay, what we're going to what we're going what we propose to do is talk about the newer movie, mm. and then at the end of it we might we'll do a bit of a, a retro on the older the original movie. Okay. Mm. They were both good movies in their own right, but mm. the uh, the critics didn't like them for one reason or another. No mm. more. I'll get in those. Well, no, I'll get into it a little bit now. Actually, the new movie, mm. as far as I can see from the critics, they didn't like it because it wasn't scary enough. Ah, oh. there wasn't too many. I mean, even though it was jump scares or whatever, they wanted more. This isn't a slasher movie, guys. Hello. Oh. It's not an action well, horror. Well, it, look at their reviews. Yeah, yeah. No, what's I'm just saying? The idea. It's a mm. supernatural horror movie. Yeah. You don't always have jump scares and action and people running around ever decreasing circles. Yeah. And I think there's something similar happened to the early one back in the sixties. Had a nice story. And they worked the family into it. The kid, actually, the kid was sort of almost the main star in it. But, it, it, but yeah, because all the listings have him as first. But his dad's actually the main one. Mm. Um, but the point is that it was. A family supernatural horror. Hmm. Uh, it's more like a drama horror with a bit of suspense in there and stuff, hmm. and that you know, yeah. mystery. Yeah, and sort of stuff. Yeah. As you guys yeah. are well yeah. aware or not, that this is not the first William Castle remake movie. We did um, another one two two years ago of uh, where we were reviewing the House on Haunted Hill, the se- the first one. That's and right. The sequel. William Castle did the original one with um. Been some price in it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's one, and that, and that much yeah. later on, they, they, they continued making a tribute to William and Price by the, naming their one of their characters after. Yeah, Vincent Vincent, Price. yeah they call him Mr. Price in the movie. Yeah, that was rather that was not nice, that. So, and um, William Castle it was a reasonably good mover and shaker in his time. Uh, yeah, he was. And I d- d- you said something to me before that his daughter. Yes. Uh, his daughter is the executive producer yeah. of this one and the yeah. House on the Haunted yeah, Hill Yeah, so one. she's actually in behind the scenes as executive producer or whatever uh, for these two projects to keep her father's uh, legacy alive, yeah. which is really nice. And, of course, mm, they yeah. named this um, their production company, these, the thing that they're, uh, they, Dark they bring. Dark Castle, was it? Yeah, Dark Castle. As a bit, I guess, a dedication to dear old um, William. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Anyway, here we go. We'll get into it now. Okay, this is, okay. We're working on the newer movie, the uh, the two thousand and one version. Okay, produced by oh, crikey, Robert Zemeckis, I think Zemeckis. Zemeckis, I think it's right name. Uh, Joel Silver and Gilbert Adler, mm. directed by Steve Beck. Screenplay was by Neil Stevens and Richard uh, Devoria. Uh, the uh, the video, video, I think, yeah, the video, I think, uh, and that was uh, based on the original story done by Rob White uh, for the nineteen sixties version. Now, yeah. like I said, it was a. I don't think it's a total remake because the story is, it is had some similarities in it, but mm. it's a total new story, even though there's some similarities in it. So mm. we were arguing about that before. It's not to me. It's not a remake if the story is too different. Mm. 
I mean, a lot of the names were changed, the circumstances, what actually happened, it changed. Just the basic theme is in it. It's like two Dracula movies are not the same, you know, so not really a remake. Hmm. But anyway, that's just a, a point of contention in our household. Now, now, anyway, this was a remake, supposedly, of the 1960s version uh, mm. of the movie uh, by William Castle, as we mentioned. The film was critically panned upon release. They didn't like it. Oh, Bec- no, I, I don't. I think it was a case they wanted more jump scares for the buck. Mm. I mean, it's not always action horror, guys. Hello. Anyway, anyway, um, it had a $42 million budget and only about $68 million at the box office. But I do believe it's become a cult sort of movie and people actually are, are still buying it and watching it and different things. Yeah. So it's still making yeah. money. And so on yeah, the DVD, yeah. um, this is a bonus thing. It details everything from the, about the 12 um, angry oh, ghosts. Okay, yes, yes, I'm just yes, telling yes, the yes, audience okay. what I know about... The fact there's a bonus thing on the DVD which will detail everything about the ghost's past and why they're so have a big chip on their shoulder. Yeah, a chip or a piece of fish. Well, oh, fish and chips. <laughs> yeah, and some of them okay. can be really hostile, and others maybe not so hostile, but uh, maybe like, see, like uh, leave me alone or don't not leave me alone. Yeah, just well, whatever. Or it's just sad ghosts. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, okay, I won't go through. There's a whole list of actors here because they've listed all the actors who played the ghost and everything else. So I'm not going to go through all those guys. I'm going to hit the main ones. Okay, okay. Ch- t- Tony Shalhoub is it? Uh, he plays Arthur Critico sees the dad, who's a, whose wife has passed away, and he inherits the house from his uncle. Mm. I'll mention him later on. Mm-hmm. Um, M. Beth Davids uh, plays Kalina Aritzia. Why do they have normal names like Smith and Jones and these things? I don't know. Uh, Aritzia. She's a ghost liberator lady. He shows yeah. up in it. Mm. Matthew Lillard plays Dennis Rafkin. And he's been in... What is it in? Um, he's been in Scream, Scream. And he's been in this, obviously. He's also been in... Um, she's all that, and he's all that. The new and one. And he was in the Scooby Doo movie Shaggy. Uh, yeah, right? he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. He played Shaggy along with yeah, yeah. Freddie Prince Jr. He gets around. I mean, I like I like Matthew. He, he plays a good, interesting part. Now, moving right along, Shannon Elizabeth plays Kathy Criticos, which is Arthur's daughter. Mm-hmm. A young fellow called Alec Roberts plays Bobby Criticos. He's Arthur's son. He's a cutie, yeah. that one. Nice little fellow. Obnoxious little brat. No, no, he's, no, a, he's, he's not okay. The, he's not as bad as the... Um, now, well, well, no, okay, okay. okay. I'm just, I was just making a funnies, okay? No. Now, a lady uh, called Ra Digger. Uh, she, she plays Maggie Bess. She's a nanny. Now, I believe in her life she has, she has music. She sings like she's a rapper or something, so some people might know her in the music scene. Now, F. Murray Abraham plays Cyrus Criticos. He's the naughty un- uncle who starts all this rubbish going. Otherwise, we wouldn't have a movie. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and lastly, but not leastly, J.R. Byrne plays Ben Moss, the shifty lawyer. <laughs> he gets his own later on. Anyway, uh, I won't mention all the other people who play the ghosts and stuff and everybody else. Um, we'll get in. We might mention some of those ghosts later, um, mm-hmm. depending how much time we have. Hmm. Um, I can't think of anything else I want to talk about before it go, goes into it. I haven't got too much I want to say. Hmm. So take it away, Grizzly. Okay. So the story begins with um, dear old um, Uncle. C- what's his name again? <laughs> no, I got it. C- C- Crum. Cyrus. Cyrus. He's going. It's a weird name. Well, think about it. See, he's he's called Cyrus, but in the old movie, his, name his is... nephew is called Cyrus. Yeah, that's oh, true. I borrowed the name. Ah. Ah. So Cyrus, he is on a ghost hunt in a in a bit of a old car yard, if you will, and a wrecking he, yard. Yeah, a wrecking yard with Dennis, his um, a faithful medium assistant. Oh, he's a very sensitive medium. He he, he can yeah. feel stuff. Yeah, he can feel ghosts and probably um your future and other and, and his, well, weird. Not his future. He, well, he gets he does get a few flashes, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. See, so once he touches something he or someone, he gets a lot, of information, he gets a lot of information from that yeah, yeah. person or their history or the things that might yeah, be and coming. Pain and stuff and 
yeah, all that stuff. Yes. So he's a bit, he's a bit, he sounds a bit bent, yeah. Yes, mm. and he's not sure about they're going to catch this 12th ghost because this one, it was a very hostile mean, one. one. I think it would have been called the Jackal. Ja- the Juggernaut. The Juggernaut. He was a mean, horrible. A very twisted, angry ghost. Savage, mean. Who yeah. has, a, who has a, had a, who's had a, in the, he's in the habit of killing even when he was alive. Yeah, not mm. a very nice fellow. Yes. Anyway, um, so and they eventually some protesters arrive. That um, pro- that lady we mentioned yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, uh, Bragg like her name is. Yeah, who's uh, making it her life name. mission of trying to set these souls free, yes. saying these these souls, uh, these people were people one time or another. Yeah, but the ghost now. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean anything to them. Yes. Yeah, soon that they trap the ghost and. Dennis discovers um, her friend or boyfriend was killed in... I don't know who killed him or whoever. Uh, well, look, I'll, I'll, I'll All I know is his throat slashed. Thing, no, no, let, let us just say that Kalina yeah. is there holding her bo- her boyfriend who was mortally wounded and or dying. Yeah. Uh, and we see... Um, now, we, we find out more of it later on. And we see Cyrus... Uh, yeah, is this he, And he's lying there. His uh, throat has been... Cut flash. by a big piece of metal. Now we flash forward to yeah, Arthur about a month or two and later. his family, yeah, yeah. who are living ha- happy existences, and but somehow the credits roll a bit to the future, to the present, and we find out Arthur and his family are not going through so well because their his wife died, and he and a, now and, a fire. and and they're living on ha- hard times, yeah. living in a. Not so re- nice apartment. A dumpy res- uh, re- rental, and they got bills come out of their ears yeah. and the bum. Final uh, debt, whatever, uh, yeah. final due, final Past exactly. dues, yeah. Well, it was, it was, yeah. He can't get his hat together. Yeah. Sad so, little man. Yeah, yeah and he's he's grieving over his dead wife, and he's um, only a math t- teacher. Yeah. I don't know how much that makes. Well, well it does make big dollars, but if, if, if you're totally uh, out Skip. of control and you're not... But, and you're not focused, yeah. But money then again, mean anything, yeah. maybe even after the funeral, it would have cost them an arm and a leg. I don't know much about funerals. Yeah, but look, get off the funeral. Get get away from the funeral. Talk I about just the movie. mean that sometimes uh, funerals do cost an arm and a leg, depending on who you well, talk to. Well, depending if you get a really expensive coffin or not, and if you get a metal one to get the vampires out, blah 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 blah. <laughs> yeah, get on with it. Yes. <laughs> anyway. They then get a knock, knock from um, a lawyer and, or a rap, a, tap, tap on a chamber door. Yeah, yeah. yeah what yeah. lawyer Ben? Ben Moss. Yeah, and he comes in, she tells him, "Guess what? You guys inherited something." A really from groovy him. house. Yeah, mm. and so he ends up setting up his laptop, and we get Cyrus. It's a video will, if you will. What's well, a video? Yeah, a uh, yeah, presentation from good old. Sorrow saying, hey, you wonderful nephew of mine. You just inherited yeah. this nice house. Congratulations. Live long and prosper, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and he says in his last bit of the video, well, maybe I'll see you again in another life. In, in a creepy life. kind of way. <laughs> a lot more creepier than the old one, obviously. Well, was, uh, look, just move as on. We're moving talking on. talking about this movie. So <laughs> they take their cars, they drive to this place, drive, drive, drive. And drive, drive, drive. It's a long way out. And and hours. they come to a house and it's a glass house. Yeah, and, and it With all really these weird groovy. scribbles really all, all over the um, it's building. It's Latin writing on all the panels. Yeah, Latin writing. They're containment writing. spells, but they didn't know that at the time. Mm. Yeah. And outside, Dennis posing as a... Electrician. Uh, yeah, work, work for the electricity board looking for yeah. the fuse box. And yeah. he's there to try to find the money Cyrus owes him. Yes. Yeah. And so Amongst other things. Yeah, so, among other things. Soon enough, they, they get out the key. It's a really unusual key. Yeah. It's a, like looking at a skeleton key, only Almost. much more creepier. Uh, but skeleton key, you know, you, I don't know why I said skeleton key. Because skeleton know. key just means a key that goes okay, okay. opening a lock. Okay, you have a point. <laughs> I just mean that this looks like a very unusual key. A really it weird looks key. looks like very unusual. Yes. So they put it in, and the next minute it, it starts um, start moving like a clock, if you yeah, will. The, a mechanism inside the house starts, and then all these panels start. Moving around and lights come on and different things and, and it lights up like the Crystal Palace. No, no, yeah. Whatever, yeah. I gotta um, admit when when yeah. I think about this house, I don't know how. I just don't think that I would have wanted to stay there. Why? It's just unusual, like a house that has a built-in mechanism and ghost. like that. 
a ghost. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think I would like one with glass windows. Yeah, oh, so you worry about a bathroom like, and a toilet. I mean, it's all frosted glass. You cannot see anything. Yeah, but most, of, but apart from the bathroom, which had frosted glass, I might imagine, but the rest of the house is not so frosted glass. Well, yeah, well yeah, you can't play hide and seek, honestly. Anyway, is that a big problem? So they enter. Yeah. It's very interesting. There's a, the, the, on the floor. There's a countdown clock, if you will. I think it, a, that looks no, like it's, it's moving in a weird it's circular motion. It's not a countdown clock. It's just some weird circling things with funny characters on it moving around. Okay. Yes, yeah, counting down they to something. Don't, they're not counting down. It's lining up for what's happening in the house over the next couple of hours. Yeah. But not like Arthur I'm saying anything now. I don't, get, don't want to give it away. Arthur tells them to stay put. He, his kids. But they... But they and their nanny decide to go Let's explore and run around the place and go mad. Yeah, yeah. yeah, while he goes to Cyrus's old office to discuss things with a lawyer, <laughs> yeah. like um, how how would they pay for this house? What's the yeah, well, yeah, stuff r- yeah like rates and stuff. Rates. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to call them America, but yeah, yeah the local council. Yeah, stuff. according yeah, to Arthur money, yeah, yeah. in the movie, he said in this movie he said that that. That Cyrus splur- splurged the family fortune. He wasted it, yeah. He squandered it, not squandered. splurged. Uh, but, yeah, but he didn't squander it. it. Everyone thought he squandered it all. Yeah, so... He didn't squander all of it. He built this really nice house, and there was some money hanging around, and lots yeah. of groovy things. Yeah. Dennis goes downstairs, and he finds out that all the ghosts are inside the basement, inside those special cells that him and Cyrus made. Yeah, I'm not sure who made them. Obviously, well, I don't know if he made. He he helped them get them, but and Cyrus brought them back here and bung them and bung gave them a room. Mm. Yeah, yeah, gave them a room each. Among the some of the um, ghosts is none other than Arthur's wife. Among them, yeah. she died in a horrible fire. And he went to and hospital. And she died, and they yeah. collected her soul without him knowing about it. Yeah, a bit weird that, don't you think? I mean, well, how I did they knew? I, I don't know. You see, maybe mm. it was a fluke. Maybe. They set fire to the house. I think I that, don't know. Again. I think it is a bit weird because how did Cyrus knew that she, that she was going to go to hospital and die a very s- slow and agonizing death? Good, groovy. Move on. I'm just saying. I mean, what if she survived? People do survive being burnt. I I, I recently saw an incident about a woman who got severely burned in a in a bush in a yep. um a campfire, and now she's she's at the moment. You know, her face is mute, uh, very damaged, you but she's, bit, yeah, but she's, yeah. she's still living and she's working out her little well, okay. handy, you know, the bits and pieces well, of herself. Well, you know the story. Anyway, moving on. So Not Moving right along, folks. Yeah. So, um, Dennis heads back upstairs and tells Arthur, guess what? We, I work for your, your uncle and he and I used to catch her ghosts. And, and they're all downstairs. And, he <laughs> sa- and Arthur gets confused and thinks... Goats? No, ghosts. You know, Boo, Casper, you know. <laughs> That's what happened in the movie. It's so hilarious. Yeah, goats. Anyway, yeah. Arthur is sceptical and the lawyer is pretending not to, to not to hear but anything. The, the lawyer knew all. Oh, you know, yes, he does. Yeah. It's hard to know. You can never trust all. I mean, the best lawyer Go disposing on. of their of oversaw in a movie was Jurassic Park. Where the Tyrannosaurus Rex <laughs> knocked out the building, and the lawyer was sitting on the toilet, and the T Rex just looked at him and went, "Oh goody, lunch!" and he ate him. And everyone cheered. And this guy should have been the same. Anyway, <laughs> this lawyer he heads to the basement, and there he walks past these um, the cells. He has these special glasses. They're yeah, I really should cool mention. ones. Well, you look like safety glasses that you wear uh, in a in a workshop. Yeah, I but, should have mentioned this at the beginning. There's a special safety glasses that allow you to see the ghosts. You've got special prisms in it or something rather. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. This was probably inspired by the um, glasses from the 1960 Well, movie. they had some sort of goggles type thing, but same yeah. sort of idea. Yeah. That was a bit of a 3D I- idea at the time. You know, before the idea of 3D, <coughs> of poking through the, the image, this was um, their first attempt back in the 1960s. But in this one, in this movie, they didn't do that for this one. They just didn't, did it... Um, a little bit more differently, obviously. Just move on. Stop talking about the old movie. I'm just telling them. <laughs> we, we, but we're going to mention some, some crap about it later. <laughs> anyway, Keep back on to... Keep telling the story. I want to go to bed. You okay, know? back yeah. to the story. 
and I get over this moron here. Mr. Mr. Moron to you. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. so um, they, the kids um, start hanging. Well, one of the kids, Bobby, he heads down to the basement. He hears all these ghostly voices. Oh wait, I forgot. I I, I miss. I forgot. I I miss the lawyer part because of moron here. So Mr. Moron. He heads. So the lawyer heads into the basement. He passes he these. He was going. passes these ghost cells. He said, Hi, head on. Yeah. And he finds the money that's in a very, in a very big suitcase. Well, well, you, well, you know those, those, those big attaché cases that pilots use, like a map bag, mm-hmm. really big. And he and he picks up off this off the floor, but there was a pedal under it. Yeah, and, and this so he picked it up, and the pedal was released, and started things happening. All these windows and doors started flying yeah. open and closed, and everything. Yeah, Ooh. somehow this pedal starts opening one of the cells, and this one was for the um, one of the ghost who he p- kind of pissed and got angry at. So the girl, was it? Yeah, a girl one who. One the girl, something. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, she then. Actually, she didn't do anything. The door itself ends up swinging and cutting right through his... Yeah. And cutting ha- him in the half. He flies and dies straight down the middle from ear to ear. Across, straight through his shoulders. Yeah. Yep, yep. And, very And, and all, a very good effect. And all the time he's looking, his eyes are moving and all over the place. And you think he's still alive, but... Then the front of him slips down. Yeah. yeah. And then the back slips down later. Ah. It is disgusting. It looks good. Look good. Anyway, moving on. So, <laughs> yeah, moving right um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, while, while this is happening, the kids are enjoying their freedom of the place. Um, the do- older daughter found a nice room to, to check out, and this is where she encounters that same ghost while she's dipping her hand in the water. And we think she's going to attack her, but dear old Arthur comes in and saves her. And Yay. so they ha- they realize that that Bobby, the younger sibling, has given the nanny the slip. So he's, but he's out downstairs in the basement where all the ghosts are. And all the ghosts are saying, come down here. And mum's going, don't, don't come down here. Yeah. yeah. yeah she, so. Stay away. Yeah. 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 And just so you guys know, Bobby and the other boy in the movie, they're obsessed with creepy stuff at first in this movie. But when he starts encountering these ghosts, he, then he gets, starts getting scared. Yes. And then he sees his mum, and he knows it's his mum because she's, where, she has that ivy pole thing, well, and, yeah, yeah, and yeah, part of her pole, face yeah. is not burnt, yeah. just half of it. He knows what mummy looks like, okay? Yeah. Move right along. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> he runs into a Cyrus ghost, and he's, he's taken away. Eek. Meanwhile, while this is happening... <laughs> um, they're still upstairs, and they think maybe the kid, maybe Bobby is downstairs. So they make tent plans to go down there, unaware of what they might face down there. And of course, the officer says, "If I, we find any money, we'll be, we'll pay you what we owe, and you can um, bugger off." Bugger off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. Yeah, they found out. Also, they found out the the entrance is closed or locked. Yeah, off. yeah. The front door's been sealed when they uh, when the lawyer picked up the bag. It sealed the house from the outside. Mm. And that reminds me a little bit of um, House on Haunted Hill. I think that's probably where the inspiration came from. Everything was locked. From. You I couldn't th- get out until dawn. And uh, in the remake there, all those things went lockdown mode. Remember? Mm, true. All those panels slipped in the place. You couldn't, couldn't get out. Mm. Yeah, true. So, anyway, uh, so they head down to the basement and uh, they split up like they always do in these movies, which I think is stupid. Well, well, they are stupid. I know. Let's hold hands. No, no, that Dennis never heads, no, no, no. Dennis yeah. heads off with the maid, with the um, nanny, and um, Arthur and his daughter head down the other way. And of course, Arthur still doesn't believe it's a ghost. It's just um, the kids just running around being silly. But he's not hundred percent sure. But then yeah. his daughter puts on the special glasses, and she sees one of the um, ghosts. I don't know, what, what, which one was it? Um, the one inside the bit of a cage in the, the, jackal. On, the jackal. He's, he's a bit of a mental host. Yeah. He's the one that kills killing people and put himself in the nut house and and they uh, he got killed in the, yeah. a fire in the asylum or yeah. something or other. Yeah. 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 This is where really uh, we we get um, the nice lady who's the um, trying to, to to get these ghosts out of there. She appears. Pops in. She, she's stuck in before the, the, the place sealed itself up. Yeah. 
Anyway, she mm. then explains to Arthur what the situation is. That all the 12 ghosts, including his wife, are there to start um, this... Well, this house is actually... this machine. The house is actually a machine. Yeah. And the ghosts are going to power the machine. And the one who's in charge of the machine will get some sort of control or power over the past, present, and future. Yeah. Become the most powerful person on Earth, yeah. supposedly. Yeah. And according to her, she says that the only way to stop it is a 13th ghost, an act of pure lo- love. Someone has someone. to sacrifice himself out of pure love. Yeah. Mm. And this is where, uh, while they're talking, his mm. daughter disappears. We don't see it happen, but we, while we get a few close-up shots of Arthur and the lady, um, somehow she just vanished in a white mm. shot. Anyway, moving on. Soon enough, they regroup in the office again. It took takes a lot of effort because they had to avoid the um, all the nasty hostile ghosts. Oh, 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 yes, and they got there safely. Ish. <laughs> Ish. Of course, some of them are not hostile. Some of them just just don't like if you cross their paths. You might generally piss them Get off. Get the f out of the way. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They got an attitude because they yeah. have an attitude, and they don't. And if yeah, ghost, it's yeah, just yeah, like yeah. the expression when you encounter a, a, a wild animal in the wild, if you don't bother them. They yeah. won't bother you. Yeah, somewhere. Like Something like that. Anyway, Dennis explained in this in one of the scenes that most of the time the ghosts are harmless, but if they're but other ghosts are very hostile and angry. Like maybe the, it's because their time in these cages are making them more angrier. Yeah, well, you don't be stuck in a cage all your life, you know, or death, or whatever. whatever. Yeah. Anyway, they regroup, and this is where in this in the office. That she tells them that Alpha's wife is one of the ghosts downstairs. How can this be? Alpha is pit angry, and I can't blame him if he was, because his wife is a nice person, and why would she be trapped in a place like that? <laughs> Just lucky. Anyway, they in order to save the kids, that they must go down there and try to find, you know. To find them, obviously. Exactly. So there they go. Looking, and you know, Dennis yeah. doesn't think mm. the idea of a sac- sacrificing Arthur is the best alternative. There must be another s- way around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, blah, he's, blah, blah, blah. but he offers to help anyway. So while they are going down there, they use one of the panels that with the Latin inscriptions well, on it. all the containment spells to, on it. To, mm. As a bit of a shield. So they use it as... So and it to, works quite well. Yeah, it works for a bit. But anyway, they get cornered by a ghost. And, and they're cornered against the um, up against the wall, and only one person could fit behind it. And so, Dennis takes this opportunity to sacrifice himself to save Arthur. Yeah. So he allows himself to be torn apart by the hammer and the jack and the uh, jack. Juggernaut, juggernaut. Yeah. yeah. So, so, he, me guys, so they guys, really, really so the, they tore him limb from limb and snapped him in half like a pretzel. Yeah. Yeah, while this is happening, the ma- the nanny and the lady, they're heading down to the, where the mechanisms of the machine are. And we, this is where we get um, Arthur's uncle appears. And we think he's a ghost, but he's not a ghost. And then the um, lady whacks her, the, the nanny. nanny, behind the back of the head. Of this big book. And <clears throat> this is where we find out that both Saris and her are working together. She gives him this nice friendly kiss. Mm. And we find out about now that she actually killed her assistant, her yeah. partner, who was I like supposedly to trying to save the ghost. Yeah, uh-huh. it does explain a lot. Yeah, mm. so she was on, because the, yeah, there's she no, was on the other team. Because the ghost uh-huh. in the first movie, for, I mean, not first movie, I mean, for, at the opening, he was very hostile, and there's no way he would just go ahead and slash his throat. Because uh, then ghosts are not... This, these ghosts are not like that. They well, that don't. one was. The juggernaut wasn't very nice. Yes, but he's more... He's throwing cars he, around at people and he's everything. He's more um, brute strength, not and not me, simple slash and gash. Me, me. Anyway, anyway uh, yeah. so she's working for him, and I guess this is... She's probably the the inf- the uh, historic person who informed him about if you have collect, say, 13 ghosts, you're in control of this machine. Well, she probably helped him a bit. Yeah, yeah, a bit of the historian side to it, if you will. Well, whatever, mm. moving right along. Like Dennis is um, the medium whom he who assisted him in his well, quest the for the these thirteen ghosts. He keeps saying he's a sensitive. He can sense the ghost. Mm-hmm. He, yeah, 
and that's you can actually sense them and all the thinking and pick up the histories and and he he's like a GPS machine. He's over there, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um. Very sensitive. Now they they she she also told tells um Sarah that she's told Arthur about how she's told him that Arthur must become the sacrifice in order to let these ghosts go but it's actually the <clears throat> the 13 ghosts is supposed to make the machine work supposedly well that's part of it that everyone was saying even the 13 ghosts to make it work mm. but what actually happened was that the 13th ghost was a fail safe mm. to actually make it not work so it was a reverse fail safe if you will because if you if you if you had all these nasty ghosts there, well, she lied about that. Obviously, she did. I think she must have been working with Cyrus, but was uh, not really working with him. Mm, I think the exact opposite. Yeah, I, I think she was against him, but she was pretending to be working with him so she can control it, so it wouldn't happen. I think the exact opposite. Well, I think that she was talking she, I think she was killing himself I and having to stop yeah, the process. Yeah, well, I think she wanted. I think the thirteen ghost was meant to be the the thing to allow the to complete the ritual, but not the way they said it. A, a pure heart, someone dying out of pure love. Yeah, because that was a trick. I, I think know she, that. Yeah, was that was tr- she was interpreted the Latin. Yeah, she, I know that she, tr- but according but according to them that the um. So anyway, as we're saying, the so the thirteen ghost is going to be the final. Um, ghost that will make Cyrus invinci- supposedly, you know, supposedly invincible from, and all that stuff and become all, all powerful. Mm. Anyway, he then suggests to ta- put the kids that he kidnapped, both of them, into the machine so that they will get Arthur to jump into the eye and try to save them or die in the attempt, whichever comes first, mm. uh, whatever. Anyway, um, so... He he, you know, he has no more use for that lady, so she ends up squished between two of the walls. What is it? Yeah. What? Now keep talking. Just keep talking. Keep it moving. That's a bug. Praying mantis, that's all. We have a praying mantis in here. That's all. All right, move on. My cat's going. What's that? There you go. Carry on. <laughs> so, um. Now, D- uh, Dennis is out of the picture. He's been killed by the Jaggernaut and the Hammer. So, Halfa gets a final glimmer of his wife. She's um, She approaches him and they have a bit of a moment. Like, he Aww. misses her and all that stuff. And it's rather sad. It's like Casper and... Oh, oh Casper and... Sorry. Okay. Anyway, so, eventually... Um, these ghosts are called by a recording of some spells. Yeah, it's a, it must be in Latin or something, rather some. Yeah, yeah, yes. no, really, 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 Eeny, meeny, teeny, weeny, you must come Al this way. Oh, like that it was like, really, 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 yeah, 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 just weird, some, weird crap. Just some weird Latin words. We think so, yeah. I anyway, know, I don't know Latin. So they're summoned to the circle to perform the final ritual, and so Arthur heads down there. And he can He then we then flash back, or not flash back. We then hear a voiceover of the lady talk saying earlier about the thirteen ghosts, describing them in detail and how many there are. And so far we got twelve. And then the Arthur 13? then and then Arthur looks over and sees Cyphers and so, and he takes off his glasses and slowly. He can still see him. And ah. he then does a run up to him and says, "You son of a bitch!" All that stuff and, and starts, starts pounding. Him and pounding. Of punch course, and Cyphers gets the upper hand, tells him, "I chose you because you're stupid and, and lazy you, and uh, uh, and I think and you're and, and you waste of space and all that." He was very insulting, he was. Yeah, he was very insulting. What a lot of families for, hey, folks. Anyway, yeah. then the nanny, using her um, rapping ability... Oh, she wasn't rapping. She's just trying to... She, she, she starts messing with the, the tape, tape recorder. And clipping buttons and we're just trying to turn the machine off. Yeah, and this allows the ghost to get out of the control of the um, Latin words and they kind of take out Cyrus yeah, in the worst way. We will, we will. Except for, except for um, Arthur's wife, who wasn't among them. I think it's just all the hostile ghosts all that were angry. All the ones were there. Yeah, so they throw him into the machine and sliced and diced. Yeah, Cyrus got all sliced up. and Actually, yeah, that's pretty well, isn't it? 
Uh, throwing a naughty one in there Ooh, that was wouldn't fair. really work, no, obviously. No, of course not. Not a selfish yeah, but being, yeah, no, yeah, I don't may, think. May, may, maybe if Arthur died doing it, he may have actually uh, completed the spell, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter. And this mm. is where Dennis appears as in Ghost as, Form, as ghost. who tells him, go ahead, Arthur, you must complete, you must save your kids, all that stuff. And, of course, I've counted down when the machine is malfunctioning here. Um, I counted down how many times the... the Coils, the um, weird. Oh, well, uh, the, the, these big metal coils, I think, are flipping up and they're coming yeah, down. Yeah, I stuff. counted them off, say, t- I three times, and it, and it kind of stops in between the three, you know. And he has few to seconds. jump just the right time, so when they're going down, so we get the middle before they pop up again. Otherwise, he would have been sliced. Um, a slice and dice, like a uh, bit of uh, pastrami, yeah. roast beef, you know. Yeah. yeah while this is happening, yeah. mm. the glass inside the the, the big house sli- starts shattering. Like all, all the glass panels. Yeah, and the whole place goes up, and bang, 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 and bang, bang, bang. all eleven ghosts slowly head out into the woods. Whoop, and, doop, doop. and hi ho, hi ho, it's off. Sorry, Either going back to where they originally haunt, or back or onto well, the afterlife. We're, we're, we're onto the afterlife, going back home where they're hanging out. You know. Yeah, who knows? Whatever, whatever ghosts do when well, they're yes, no exactly longer right. forced to convict. When they've got a day off, you know, they go home and do something, put their feet up. Yeah. What's Casper? Arthur's so, wife yeah. remains and says her final farewells to the and family. And she's not scarred anymore. She's all pretty. Yeah, good. she looks like what. I imagine what people would look like if they went to heaven, obviously. Yeah, she's a nice lady. Yeah. Yes. So she says her goodbyes and fades off into heaven. And the kids hug their dad and we hear the nanny screaming about how... Um, I'm over this shit. I'm not going to be a nanny anymore. I quit. <laughs> yeah. Like that. And Mike was saying something interesting to me just um, yesterday when we were watching it, that he wondered um, the suitcase was probably not even damaged. So was well, there a big chance that maybe they may have found it? And well, it depends bought- how much damage you got to the building and whether they're going to go downstairs and have a look for it. Yeah. And... So all the glass panels got broken. Yeah. And not to mention, there's some yeah. valuable artifacts there. If they didn't get damaged, they they pick up all the things, and yeah. they could have cashed out quite nicely. Yeah, most of that stuff. There was a lot of ancient, and some not so ancient, antiques there that were yeah. look really interesting. Unless I they came want, from this, dolls. This is a really groovy place. I could live there, you know. But, but but there's a big chance that most of the stuff may come from dolls and cents. <laughs> well, no, a cheap, a cheap shop down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really call them merry. Because I mean, yeah, yeah nickels and dimes sort of stuff. Because yeah, I've yeah, seen yeah. you know those uh, ri- those you know, artifacts, swords and stuff, daggers. And usually I see them at Dolls and Sense places. Yeah, cheap. Yeah, cheap, yeah. nasty. What, uh, yeah. Cheap and nasty. Anyway, let's yeah. move on. Yes. I'm not going to go for a list of all the ghosts. No. Nope. We've got other things to talk about, okay? i got them here because we need them, but we don't need them. Um, yeah. I did think this uh, one was a lot better than the other one because in what? the 1961, um, we didn't give us give up... Give up Give us a bigger understanding of what some of these other ghosts, apart from a few of them, like a well, a, a, a Swedish chef who yeah. was um, angry at his ex-wife and well, his her in, ex-lover. In both of them, they got droops and drabs of backstories for the ghost. Yeah. Okay. Both got mm. it. We, we we knew what they were mm. to a certain degree because it was it was brought into the storyline just a little bit, so people knew who they were and whatever. However, let's move on to reception for this one. Okay. okay. Generally. Mostly negative reviews. I think they're looking for too many. Too m- they're looking for more action uh, and a few more jump scares. And I've, I've, I've found the story moved along quite nicely. I thought it was very entertaining. Um, if you're not, if you're looking at a horror movie or a supernatural movie, and it's not an action movie, it could be a bit slow for some people. They just want to get the uh, adrenaline pumping, and it's not an adrenaline pumping movie all the way through. And that's why some of the uh, critics didn't like it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, apart from that, okay, let's go through it. The acting was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I liked it. Um, the, the starring, the starring, uh, the people who starred in it were they. Were, I think they were very suited to the roles they're playing. Great. Uh, the set design was really, really good. Um, the special effects they're in were mm-hmm. quite good as well. Um, yeah, I've got no problem with the movie at all. Yeah, okay, maybe you could have had a bit more action in it, but when, how much can you do inside a glass house Yeah, uh, when, when the ghosts are tra- trying to attack you and you can't do too much? Hmm, true. Okay? Um, you can't say, I'm going to beat you up. I'll set a trap for you. 
No. So you just run away and keep, keep out of the way until the movie comes off, uh, along and you find a way to put the ghost to rest. So um, having said that, it's not a bad movie and I think it doesn't deserve negative reviews. Yeah. Actually, when I said before earlier that it, it did reasonably well. It made a profit at the box office, okay? That's not a huge good. profit. Hmm. I think it was what I said about forty something thousand to make and was it forty two million to make and about sixty eight million theatre box office receipts. But the home media side of it would have brought money in and it's still popular today. People are still watching it and it's getting a cult it's developed a cult following out of the past twenty years. Cool. So obviously people are watching it and money is still being made, so obviously it wasn't a total waste of time. Another thing I should mm, mention, yeah. when to avoid reflections from the crew members, the director had his crew wear black uh, clothes yeah. on set. They also lit it in a free, 60 free manner too. A what? A three? A special manner, you know, of, film, of lighting it. Oh, so, so you wouldn't get reflections. Yeah. yeah. So they are um, kind of, the director, yeah. this is his first is it, this is his film debut, meaning oh, this is the first that. ever film he's done. So he did very he, good. So for a first timer, he did an okay job. Yeah, but you talk, 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 you would talk to your camera guys, your lighting guys, say how do we do this, and they'll say, well, we can do that and do that. So we'll try that. Mm. So it's up to him to make the decision, but they wouldn't have to figure figure it all out for himself necessarily. But mm. you get a good cameraman, mm. a DOP, good lighting, best boy, whatever. Um, yeah, let there, somebody in there has got to have some experience. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you, you always arrange yourself with smart people. Now, yeah. um, plenty for sale on eBay and Amazon. Uh, there's rentable uh, copies through Prime and there's some for sale. Now, um, I saw a mention there, there might be VHS, but 20 years ago, I, they might have been still doing the odd VHS, so be careful. Now, before I talk about the other movie, um, this movie is in, when you go and look for it and to buy it on eBay and Amazon. Sometimes there's a pack you got both movies on it. That's cool. So you got the original movie, the mm. old nine six movie, and this one as a double pack. So yeah. I would actually go and buy the double pack. Mm. So you get the best of both worlds. Watch the old movie first, which is tamer than the second movie, the new the newer one. But you've got to remember, it was done back in the 60s. Yeah. It was a different style of storytelling in theatre. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought the opening mm. and the mm. ending to the 1961 was pretty cool. It, well, we're going to get into that briefly where now. Where William it, Castle makes an appearance we, yeah, in, bo in both can't scenes. Talk too long. And I thought it was cool <laughs> in a horror host type of way yeah. a little bit not not don't get me wrong it's it's not a horror host type of way no. he's he speaks he to the audience in the movie and talking about you know, using his 3d glasses and i think it's something called uh, what do you call it um uh something oh system. oh illusion something like that. Uh, whatever it's called uh illusion O, I think they call illusion it illusion uh and it, it's, it's explaining how people should use the, uh, yeah. the glasses. Uh, and if someone comes in after the show starts, tell them how to use the glasses. Um, if that person's alive anyway. <laughs> now, uh, and anyway, it's really good because the guy introduced it like a good, fatherly, nice figure. Yeah. And warning you, you know, if you don't want to see the ghost, don't look through... The, the, um, the red... Um, if you don't see the ghost, go look for the red view finder yeah, thing. Yeah. Oh, but if it's if you do want to see the ghost, look for the blue one. Yeah, but yeah. you'll still hear and yeah, the screams, yeah, the cackles, yeah. and the whatever. Now, having said that, the um, the DVD version of this, the all downloadable copy, it's actually it's been manipulated so the red is there, and you can see you don't need three D glasses. Okay, they they thought about that. Now. I'll, I'll do a quick run over this because we don't talk about this whole movie. It's the yeah. same sort of storyline. Now, William, this was a supernatural horror film, same as the other one, um, not an action horror. Uh, William Castle produced it, William Castle directed it, and Rob White uh, wrote the uh, screenplay, and well, story and screenplay, which was taken for the second movie. Uh, it was made for 1.5 mil, probably their dollars back in those days. Budget got no freaking idea. I can't find anything. No, um, what and when it do? was released at the theatre, it was double billed with things like Twelve to the Moon, The Electronic Monster, and Battle in Outer Space. Ooh, mm. Really good. Now, who played in it? Uh -huh. Now, you watch a lot of old movies, guys. You probably know some of these these people. Um, 
Right. Now, Charles Herbert was a young boy. He was the one that was centred around to a certain degree, uh, him and his dad mainly. Um, but Charles Herbert, I don't know if he did too much mm. after this. He yeah. wasn't a bit he, I don't think he could keep the, keep the cute going. You know, you, know, you get cute kids like Macaulay Colgan and stuff. Yeah. You lose the cute and you, you, don't, you yeah. don't transfer, the yeah. transition to adult acting is not quite the same. Yeah. Okay, Joe yeah. Morrow played um, his oldest sister. Very beautiful young lady. I think she's a few movies and stuff and a few TV yeah, shows. Yeah, not as many as um, mm. some of the other actors in this movie. In this, I should mention. Go on. Donald Woods plays Cyrus Sorber. He's a dad. Now he's in quite a few movies, I believe, um, in TV and whatever. And Rosemary to Camp. He played. The, they've seen played the mum Hilda Zorber. She was in a few things as well. Martin Milner, he played Benjamin Rush, the lawyer. He died. Yay. Yay. Uh, Margaret Hamilton plays Eli- Elaine Zacharides. <laughs> She's a housekeeper. Now, about 20 years earlier, she was the Wicked Witch of the West in The Wizards of Oz. <laughs> and, she, and she's got the same personality. I, I think, honestly... Um, the Wizards of, of Oz might have typecast her yeah. over the years. I think she's a serious actress and she did a lot of other jobs. Yeah. But they kept saying, oh, we're going to do a Halloween special. Go and mm. see if she's available. You know, yeah, and, I, seem and, to I don't think it was fair for her. Yeah, it seems not a not yeah. nice thing to do. Yeah, yeah no, it's short. Now, uh, John Van uh, and Draylen, uh, Draylen, Draylen, uh played Van Allen who worked with um, Soros at the museum. So... Uh, pretty much same sort of plot. You had uh, the uncle, uh, which you don't see, he's already dead. Uh, he plays uh, the dead guy, obviously, the dead guy. He leaves the house and the gear to a fa- his family, his nephew, who's broke, keeps, you know, keeps losing uh, furniture out of the house and stuff because they're all, it's all been repossessed on higher purchase. Um, and they're going really, really yeah. bad, and they just score a nice house. Hey, Mike, you mentioned something about lo- many years ago that yeah. that in America that I did, well, not just America. Okay, not just but America. Back in those days, a lot of things could be bought on a higher purchase. Okay, you could buy your beds, your television, your dining rooms, uh, stuff, your your lounge room stuff, all on higher purchase. You don't keep the payments up; they just come along for truck and take all stuff out of your house. Gee. And they got legal right to it. It was higher purchase. Mm, they had the same thing straight. Now, higher purchase, I think, it, in this country anyway, doesn't exist anymore. Hmm. Not that, not to that extent anyway. Now, moving on. Um, so, so yeah, these people inherited the house. Same sort of deal. Uh, nasty lawyer looking for the money that uh, Zorba, in this case, Zorba. Um, Zorba the Greek. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Um, Danny's or Uncle Zorba. What's his, what's his, I can't He's an uncle, name. obviously. Uncle, what's his first name? I can't remember. Um, uncle Zorba. That'll look. Um, anyway. He, um, he, he cashed in all his money and shares of socks and bolts and hid the money in the house. Uh, the lawyer's been looking Mike, for it. Mike, um, do you think we should talk about this one? Because we're not I we're know, only I'm talking gonna, I'm about I'm just doing a bit of a comparison. That's why I'm trying to get through it without telling the full story. I was story. going to say something, but you continue to go no, on. I and I haven't got around to it because you keep talking over me. I was going to say, guys, that, that unlike this one, which um, it's the, um, 1961, and the 2001 ex- does it explain why Cyrus is somehow has these ghosts, but this, in this one, it doesn't give us an exp- In the 1961, there's no explanation of why um, the uncle kept the ghosts in the house for so, ma- so long. He collected them. Yes, but for no. what reason? There's a, there's a, there's a big big um big question mark in the room. There's no why did he keep them so so long? Why can't he just let them go back to their haunting places? Anyway, or he, maybe for some reason or other they were earthbound and he kept them there. Okay, mm. he found them earthbound and he brought them there to earthbound them there. Now what I was saying, I was going through this briefly and and, and I was almost finished anyway. That pra- same, same sort of thing. You got the lawyer chase the money, blah blah blah. Uh, blah blah. And in the end of it, the lawyer gets killed by the ghost, and uh, ha- they find the money, and mm-hmm. everybody lives happily ever after. Hmm. Uh, except for maybe the ghost, they go for a walk outside. But when the say? little boy asks the housekeeper, "Will they? They've gone. Yeah, they're gone. Will they come back?" 
I'll be back. Oh, goody. We're looking for a sequel. There was never a sequel. Yeah, yeah I certainly mm. like the smirk at the end of the um, yeah. that one, where she just gives you she, gives the audience a, a small, teeny weeny sinister the, smile. The little boy says, are you really a witch? And she says, ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. Nice. And she turns around and picks up a broom to do a bit of sweeping and gives a bit of a raised eyebrow mm. and, and walks away. A sinister really smile cute. too. Really uh, if you could call a small, small smile a sinister yeah. one. Anyway. I won't go through too much. No. Because um, this is mostly about the 2001 one. Well, yeah, it is. Yeah. But that's just a quick comparison storyline, okay, mm-hmm. which I was trying to get get through to you. Mm. Okay, because I've only got, well, I don't know how you do, do a review on the other, the old movie, but they're, they're both good movies. Now, the, there's there's horror, drama horror, or horror dramas, as an action-based horror movies. If it... The drama, suspense, thriller ones always move a bit slower. They, they're more into the storytelling and slower build-ups and less jump scares. Still both good movies. I like the old one because it's... Well, it was done back in the 60s when they didn't have all the wonderful special effects and stuff. They tried to make it as good as they could. They had brought in 3D, which alone made it interesting to watch. And, um, and hmm, Go on. And then they decided, um, William Castle's uh, daughter or granddaughter, or whatever it was. Um, his daughter. daughter. I decided to uh, let him make a remake of it and she became exec producer. Yeah. And the second movie has more special effects, a bit of, maybe some CGI, whatever. And a bit um, more wider storyline. Yeah, and it. a slightly more developed storyline. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, like but he was making budget movies like Roger Corman. Yeah. And stuff. I, yeah, I got to admit, though. And Romero and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wasn't making big dollar values. He wasn't doing accessibility to mill job. He was just doing ordinary churn and burn movies. Yeah, and another yeah. thing about this, the special effects and the sound mix that was made for the 2001 one was so illegible in this film that many film what? people cl- <laughs> claim yeah. that the movie was physically painful, meaning, I get what they mean, that it's all um, the f- the um, ghosts are moving in a funny yeah, they're, 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 they're flickering on and off a little bit here and there because they're ghosts. You don't say they're not solid. Hmm. And there's a strobe effect in there. They said, "Oh, I might set off people having an epileptic seizure or something." What a load of crap! Hmm. Yeah, you know, who said that? A doctor or just some knob who hasn't got a clue how to set off an epileptic seizure and how, what frequency they need? And you know, no, nah, yeah. no, nah, there wasn't that bad. I got friends who. Have, have, who watched this movie and they were epileptic. They didn't have a seizure in the last room, okay? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's a good movie. Um, yeah. So, no problem. No health issues. But I guess it yeah. may have only affected if no, some people... someone just said that. Oh, the, the big strobe lights. There wasn't any strobe lights in it. Hmm. There wasn't any flashing lights in it. I didn't say strobe lights. I said they sound... said strobe lights and notes I, I read, okay? Okay, okay. They had the flashing lights, like hmm. discos and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. And and the, and the strobe effect, the mm. flash, 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 mm. and that well, they didn't have that, and they have to be more consistent. Otherwise, yeah, whatever. Anyway, anyway, who cares? Um, this movie, this, uh, the old movie, is they're playing for sale as well mm. uh, on both Amazon and yeah. other. Do not confuse them, guys. If yeah, you one's thought- 1960 and one's two thousand and one. Yeah. Uh, now, what I was going to say is, like again, there's a dual pack you can get both on, and being the old 961, I didn't see any VHS. Doesn't mean there's none out there in different areas. Don't get a VHS one by mistake. Obviously, you won't be able to play it if you don't have a player. Mm, um, but exactly, yeah, guys. enjoy both. I'd get a double pack. I've got yeah. both the movies. I like them both. Yeah. yeah. If you, but if you want just the one to start off with, um, try to remember to put the date in in case you end up yeah, putting the, the wrong dates yeah, in. Yeah, the good one. They're the one for all special effects. That's 2001. Yeah. Now, when you go looking for it, it's 13 ghosts. 13 could be 1-3 ghost, or it could be written in the machine as 13 with the word 13, ghost, or it could be 13, T-H-I-R-1-3-E-N, ghost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A bit of stylizing there, so yeah. be looking around for it. So, so yeah. try to keep an eye yeah. out, guys. Do not just um, pick the first one that comes to mind in, on Amazon. But, yeah, watch out for VHS. 
Hmm. Uh, because yeah, the old yeah, the older ones can have a few of those copies still hanging around. Yeah. Um. Can we look at um, some of the reviews from two thousand and one? I would like to see what their um what well, what they, they said. They you said they didn't say a lot. You know. Well, I just like, I would like to hear um at least okay. why um they think it was a a, okay. a, a film yeah, bomb right. to hey, them. Can I, can I rate it before we do that? Yeah. Nine and a half. There. No. <laughs> I'm gonna say ten and a half. You can ten and a half. Yeah, I can say I can okay. do one. Mm. You can't count very good. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I heard that. All right, who said that? Okay. You did. Ten and a half out of ten. All right. Okay, right. Okay, reception. Reviews for the film are mostly negative. Okay, and this is what I talked to you before. I don't need to go through them, but to keep you, to appease you, I'll go and go through a couple of them. That's what I said before. The looking for jump scares, the action, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Praise was directed towards production design. But the film was criticised for its lack of scares and a number of strobe effects throughout that could induce seizures. Then has he ex- developed a seizure while he's watching um, it? Well, maybe he's an idiot, don't worry about yeah, it. Um, probably it holds no approval is. rating of 16% on Rotten Tomatoes, mm. based on 94 reviews. And the, rec- the general consensus is the production design was first rate but 13 Ghosts is distinctly lacking in scares. It ain't a slasher movie. It, mm. yeah, okay. On Metacritic, uh, it just says generally unfavourable. Okay. okay. Uh, Cinemascope gave an average of C plus on an A plus to F scale, so yeah, medium to good. Uh, Slant Magazine rated the film 2 out of 4s, paying the film's lack of scares and predicting and predictable plot twists. However, he commended the art direction uh, while also stating it was underutilised. What does so that mean? Under- they did. They could have done better. Okay. Oh. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, now here is one, and this guy is an enigma. What do you mean? He's mysterious. So a lot of the times, he's he's the exact opposite of what I think, and I get annoyed with him. Okay, go on. Roger Ebert, he praised the production value, saying the production is first rate. Okay. The physical look of the picture is splendid. Okay. However, however, uh-uh. he criticised the story, the lack of interesting characters, loud soundtrack. He's an old film, didn't like the noise, you know, the music and stuff, and, mm. and, and, and a bit of other noise going on, the cars being thrown around maybe. Uh, and poor editing. I don't think there's anything on the editing, but that's his uh, opinion. Um, oh, man. And, he, and, and unfortunately, he included it in his 2005 list of most hated films. Well, let me... Now, wait, wait a minute. You said you want me to read through Go it. Go on. Uh, near the end. In the years since its release and disappointing box office performance, the film has gathered a prominent cult following, finding further success and more positive reception. But there's no re- uh, there's no reviews about the positive reception, so I can't read them. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So it's I can't say anything more. But hmm. let's let me put it to you this way. And I said it so many times before. If I'm going to see a Freddy Krueger movie or Nightmare on Elm Street, I mean, I'm not um, Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth or something or other, I expect to have jump scares coming out of the closet. Mm-hmm. An ordinary supernatural horror movie or something, well, I don't expect to get that, that amount of jump scares out of it. I like to get a good mystery, suspense, and the horror bits thrown in to sweeten the pot. And that's what a lot of these movies are. Like it or lump it, critics, that's what they are. They're not going to change just because you say, I don't like it. Okay. So, yeah, if you like a good, interesting movie, fun in some ways, um, yeah, watch them both. I like the old one just as much as the new one. Hmm. But I, I saw the old one first when I was a kid, not long, uh, long, uh, long, not long after it was made. And uh, I thought it was great. I mean, the special effects are limited because that's what they had back in those days. But what they did with what they had was pretty damn good. Hmm. Yeah, and I, you can't say it's a crappy old movie. It's not a crappy old movie. It's a really good movie. It's 60 hmm. years ago. And it just shows you how things have developed. I kind of just yeah. didn't like the fact that Guy um, labelled this one of the worst bo- movies yeah, of all time. But, but that's his choice. Mm. I mean, he, he said, oh, it's really good and fantastic, but well, I didn't like that bit, so I'm going to put my worst movie. He just contradicted himself. 
Yeah. How he says um, how wonderful it was, how great yeah, the production and, and, was, yeah, and, and then he contradicts himself so five about. seconds later. So that's a contradiction. So yeah. Yeah. that's what I'm saying. Some of his critics are just... Yeah. I, I won't say anything about Mr. because he did pass away a few years back, yeah. but and some of the other guys might not be alive either. But the point is, it's their personal taste shouldn't really dictate what you guys watch. Hmm. Okay. As I said in the past, guys, we're not going to we're not going to steer in the wrong direction. Yeah. Are we? As we said in the past, uh, guys, we will we'll, we'll try to be constructive about the reviews yeah, yeah, as much yeah. as possible. If if we don't like the movie, sometimes, but there are um, things we like about the movie, and yeah. we're not going to encourage you to say no to a certain movie. If, if we found a really, really, really horrible movie, Sarah wouldn't want to review it anyway. I didn't right? say no, that. No, no, if we, no. If we had a really, really horrible movie, no, we wouldn't review it because she, would, she wouldn't bother. So we're only going to do ones we think are medium to good. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, uh, something good about it, not yeah. just... Um, Redeeming um, qualities, yeah. As I often said to you guys on the odd occasion, uh, one thing that does strike me is is a good story plot. Yeah. A lot and of reviewers probably, uh, and other movie guys probably don't, think yeah. this through yeah. because it, they think more on the style and the makeup and the special well, effects they can, they can do, the, and, and do not, justice. And I'm not, I'm not but I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm more <laughs> partial to a story when yeah. it comes to that. I'm not knocking the newer people doing the slasher movies and the, ho- the horrors and, the, and haunted ho- hospitals and asylums and different things, but sometimes the storylines are so lacking... It's just jump scare after jump scare after jump scare with no substance. Yeah, I was looking... No, look- no these, these other movies, whether you like or not, they've got a story in there. Yeah, I was okay. looking at a movie not too long ago that was um, a remake of something. I don't know what it was called, but I knew right away when I was watching it... Um, they kind of try to throw spice things up by throwing in... Awesome actors and makeup and special and special effects, and but by the time it finished, I felt like it was lacking something, and it, and I knew right there it was the storyline yeah, that it, was yeah. lacking. You really, if you, you, if you have a good story, you, and you got a good DOP and a good director, you can you can yeah. bring it home some fa- a, yeah. a fair to good actors. Yeah, in it. I think yeah. that's the problem with filmmakers. Yeah. They think that. They can hide behind special effects, makeup, work. props, or fancy actors they hire yeah. for the pro- oh, project. Oh, but see, CGI stuff, throw that in. Yeah, it's not going to work unless you've got a good storyline. You, you need to keep the people interested in the film. Yeah. Is there a story? Yes. And if you get your, if you've got a good story and the people are following it, you, you'll be able to take them anywhere you want. That includes the light and the dark. You have them sitting on the end of the seat waiting for the next jump scare or hmm. the next twist in the story. Yeah. yeah and that's what you want. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you that's, have, yeah. yeah as you I said. You need something to mm. entice people. Yeah. I it's don't, like a resume. Mm, exactly. You read a resume. Oh, i got a man here or a lady here. got a resume. I must read the resume. They read the first few words. It doesn't grab them. They're not going to read it. Mm. And that's the same thing. Yeah. You need a story. Or if if they, mm. if it's like any employment agent I've ever gone to, they will just flip through it and just not look at it. Yeah, far away. I mean, even though, no yeah. matter how fancy I, I ever made a resume or a portfolio, they always gloss over it and ignore the beautiful details or the skills or the skills or who employed me last stuff like that. Yes, all the good groovy all things. Groovy We've stuff. all been there sometimes, haven't we, yeah. guys? I feel like sometimes they overlook so much, or they, they don't care. They just um. Yeah. They just um, see call it as they see it, or call me as as they see yeah. it. Anyway, anyway, enough, we're, we're not talking about job hunting. So this is not about <laughs> job hunting, guys. So, um, anyway. so um, be sure to check it out on Amazon or whatever, and, or eBay and or whatever. as yeah. I said before, be sure to check your dates on it yeah. so you guys get the, the right yeah, the one. The new one is two thousand one. The old one is uh, nineteen sixty. I would actually. I'll give you a quick grading for the 1960. Yeah. I would give that about nine as well. I would give that a nine as well yeah. too, because it was pretty. I mean, a, it was ahead of its time, and you know, 1960 at the time they were trying out new things, even stuff that they never thought they would do years yeah. later. Yeah. And we're still trying to, our so hard to out. Be, yeah. I, I'll take it to the next level. Take it to the next and they, level. They, they were doing the next level stuff then for their for, the, yeah. for their time. Yeah. 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 So hmm. 
even back then, they they were trying things that we normally would have never would have thought yeah. this would ever be possible. Yeah. I mean, we were probably would have been laughing our heads off thinking that si- that that three D would not work. Well, now I got a free I got a three D TV here in my lounge room. Mm-hmm. Not the watch three D. I got really bad eyes, but I yeah. have a three D TV. Yeah. I came with the glasses the whole lot. Yes. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have any 3D movies to watch anyway. So as I said yeah. before, uh, people back then, back in the 60s, they probably would have been saying this will never go anywhere. But after a few years later, we, we some some of our movies are come out as 3D. Yeah. And for a while it was a formula, but now it's gone back. It's yeah. come it, 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 less it, it, used it really ugly head again. I mean, if you get something like a really, 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 really good Blu-ray and it's crisp and everything, you really don't need 3D. Hmm. But it, and that almost jumps out of the screen by itself anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, as I say, guys, be sure to check it out. Check them both out. I would. Yeah. Or and as actually, m- get them so cheap. Or, as Mike both. recommended, you can get both a, a, in, a, a, pack. a, good, in yeah. a pack and see which one's your favourite. But and I, I would watch the first one. If you get both, I'll watch the old black and white one first and then compare it to the new one. And actually, style-wise, apart from the, uh, the technique, six to bit, 50 years difference or 40 years different uh, in styles. Uh, one's black and white, one's colour, different things, DOP stuff, yeah, camera stuff. Yeah. It's different, but the storylines, um, everything else, mm. allowing for the poor uh, special effects back in those days, mm. they're not bad. They, they stand up together. Yes. Mm. So, guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this latest podcast, everyone. So, um, be sure to check us out in our next one eventually, and we'll see you guys next time. This is Sarah Stevenson. And Michael. Saying we'll see you guys for our next podcast. Bye for now. Okay. Bye. <laughs>